So uh, this paper focuses on the Lech paradox, which is a contradiction that arises uh, when you have female choice for uh, traits uh, that should imply male fitness. But that choice should erode the variation in heritability of this fitness in males, and therefore kind of undermines the whole principle for that female choice to begin with. Our hypothesis argues that a strong determinant of the extent to which males can express exaggerated traits or sexually selected traits depends not just on the genome of the male, but also on the epigenome of the male. So our paper is an extension of some theoretical work that was done by Russell Bondariansky and Troy Day. And what they found was that environmentally induced variation in male condition that was heritable across a single generation was, was much more effective in maintaining costly female preferences than when male condition was genetically determined. Epigenetics is this umbrella term that was very general, but in the last 15 years or so, we've more or less defined this term to mean one of three general mechanisms. The most well-studied mechanism is DNA methylation, uh, mostly focused on cytosine methylation. But we now also have a histone modification, such as acetylation, and uh, small non-coding RNAs. In, in more recent years, studies looking at small non-coding RNAs has really grown, mainly due to the advancements in next-gen sequencing, for example, RNA-seq uh, technology. Environmentally induced epigenetic effects on male condition are a very important component in phenotypic variation in male sexually selected traits. So at one extreme, if a male is subjected to a stressful environment, if the individual is infected by parasites or the result of poor nutrition or maybe even bad luck, that will cause epigenetic changes that limit the ability of the male to express attractive male traits or sexually dimorphic and highly exaggerated male traits. By contrast, if a male is exposed to very favorable environmental conditions, good nutrition, stochastic events that contribute to high fitness, in other words, good luck, if the male is well exercised, then epigenetic states in the male will be highly favorable. The male will be able to fully express the attractive or exaggerated male traits. Those sorts of males will be chosen by females and those males will produce sperm that are in epigenetically good states. In a sense, environmentally induced epigenetic effects mean that sperm carry and transmit an environmental legacy of the experiences of the male. The messenger RNA expression profile in those patients in the test sample or sperm sample, we identify abnormal expression of a large number of genes. So in other words, those patients have huge uh, abnormalities in terms of micro messenger RNA expression profile. So it's one gene mutation may not be able to cause such a dr drastic changes. So if you think about it, what can change the transcriptome so widely, the only thing I can think of would be epigenetic. We found that the TSRNAs in the sperm might represent another level of information in addition to the, the DNAs. And particularly, we have also found that the sperm TSRNAs contain lots of RNA modifications, which add to the complexity of its information. So in our paper, we find that by injection of sperm TSRNA, uh, we can recapitulate the, the phenotype that uh, obtained during the paternal exposure. So it's an intergenerational effect. The effect might break down in subsequent generations, but really in terms of explaining the uh, Lech paradox, it only requires a single generation. That is, the characteristics of the environment that a male are exposed to are transmitted epigenetically through his sperm to the offspring. It makes sense for females to choose males with exaggerated male traits because they are going to possess sperm epigenomes that result in high offspring fitness. I think there are lots of more questions. Basically, it's a big new world, and we're just landing on the shores of a new continent. But it's an exciting journey we're, we're continuing.